Hi there and welcome to lesson five in this first module. What I want to do in this lesson is build on what we covered in lesson number four uh, where we looked at uh, the C major key in terms of the chords that are built off each note of the scale. So if you remember the, the scale is very simple C, D, E, F, G, A, B and C. And then we took each of those notes and we built the chords off them. And the chords were C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G major, A minor, B diminished, and back to C. So all of those chords work together. The reason they work together is because they all share notes from the C major scale. At the moment, it sounds a little bit mechanical just going through the chords in, in, in order. What we want to do now is look at how these chords can be converted into something which is a bit more musical. And as we go through the, some of these exercises, you'll probably start hearing songs or at least hearing well-known chord sequences in them. Um, if you can remember back to the last lesson, within the scale, each degree of the scale, or each note of the scale is given a number. So your C note is given number one, the D note is given number two, three, four, five, six, seven, and back to C again, which is number one. Um, we also number the chords within the key. And so it's not confusing. What we're gonna be doing is numbering them using Roman numerals. Our C chord is a Roman numeral one. D minor chord, a Roman numeral two. Our E minor chord, a Roman numeral three. Our F major chord, a Roman numeral four. Our G major chord, a Roman numeral five. Our A minor chord, a Roman numeral six. And our B diminished chord, a Roman numeral seven back to C, back to 1. Okay, so first probably the most famous chord sequence and uh, a million and one songs have been written using this sequence. All we do is we take the primary chords. Now what the primary chords are, are all the major chords within the major key. Um, so in this case it's C, F major and G major. That's our first chord, our fourth chord, and our fifth chord. Now the fifth chord is the dominant chord there. So when you hear that chord, your ear wants it to resolve. And when you hear that within that key, you want to be hearing the C chord afterwards. What the fourth chord does is a leading chord. It leads you to that dominance within the key. So if you hear those together, C, F, G, back to F again. I'm sure you've heard that a million and one times. If we listen to all the minor chords that are within the key, these are our secondary chords. So our minor chords would be D minor. You notice I quite often play D minor using my little finger there instead of my third finger. So I've shown you using the th third finger. Personally, I find it easier to use my little finger. Again, there's no right and wrong way of doing these things. Um, I find it more comfortable, so I play it that way. So if you find more comfortable ways of playing things, don't worry about doing things slightly differently. They don't have to be exactly as written in the book. So we have D minor, E minor, Now we put those two together, what we will get is something that is quite major sounding, which is the major keys tend to be sort of happier sounding, and then the minor chords tend to be a bit more melancholy. So you get a one, four, five, and two, three. Okay, 
what we can then start doing is place some sequences which go from the one, four, five, but they also incorporate some of the secondary chords. So you could go C to D minor to F to G. So that's one, two, four, five. If we incorporate the third chord, which is an E minor, you'd be getting C, Now what you'll find is we go through these, you, you obviously, hopefully you're starting to recognise some of these sequences. These sequences can then be transposed into any key. So as I said in the last lesson, if you were to take any note and then go through tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone, which is two frets, two frets, one fret, two frets, two frets, two frets, one fret, and then build the chords and then apply one, four, five to the chords that we came up with, it would sound very, very similar. In further lessons, I'm then gonna start going into other keys so we actually build up a chord vocabulary in a sensible way of chords that all work together. Okay, uh, just to leave you with uh, an exercise to go through, I think this is a, a really good way of hearing how all the chords fit together, is literally going through all of the chords, so our C, D minor, E minor, F, G, A minor and B diminished and as we play each one just keep bouncing back to the home chord which is C. What this does is it helps you to really understand the, um, the relationship between the chords in the key. So we start off with C, then go to D minor, back to C, E minor, C, could then do is do the same thing but actually start from D minor. So we went D minor to E minor, D minor to F, D minor to G, D minor to A minor, D minor to B diminished, D minor to C. You could do the same thing, but you could start with E minor and keep bouncing back to that, and then go to F and keep bouncing back to that. That takes you through the full cycle. And what you'll find is there'll be certain changes that you personally like more than others. So you can then take those chords and then you can work out your own chord sequences for things that you actually like. Or if you recognize um, a change from a song that you like, then you can start to work out for yourself what these chords actually should be. Okay, so I'll leave you with that for now. What I'm gonna be doing in the next lesson is starting to look at adding to your chord vocabulary. So hopefully what we've done so far is we've given you a limited range of chords and actually what I've found is when you're learning the guitar, actually to limit what you do really, really, really helps. When you're learning lead guitar, actually learning it on less notes does make life a lot easier because you work out how to make those notes work for you. It's exactly the same with this. We're limiting the number of chords that we have in our vocabulary, but we're using the chords um, together properly in the correct way. When we then start to build our chord vocabulary, we'll start looking at other keys that contain a lot of the chords we already know or adaptations of chords that we already know. 
then what you'll start to do is you'll start to realize that um, as we go through things actually you can work a lot of things out for yourself and that's my aim within these lessons is to teach you enough for you to be able to figure things out for yourself so you don't necessarily need to be shown every step of the way you can then take these ideas and then do your own things with them and then come back for more ideas. I'll leave you with that for now. In the meantime, feel free to visit the website. That's www.myguitarteacher.net. Uh, you can also visit the YouTube website to see some of the other lessons. Um, and I've also got a Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash myguitarteacher. In the meantime, keep practicing and I'll see you in the next lesson. Thanks.